Jonathan Harris, the talented actor whose star shone brightly, met a tragic end that left a void in the hearts of his fans. As the years passed, his once vibrant presence began to fade, and the world mourned the loss of a true entertainer. Jonathan Harris, a skillful and articulate character actor, would later rise to fame as a cherished TV camp icon during the vibrant era of the late 1960s. Born as Jonathan Daniel Charashuchin on November 6, 1914, in the bustling borough of the Bronx, New York City, he was the second child in the family. His father, Sam Charashuchin, worked in Manhattan's garment district, while his mother, Jenny Charashuchin, dedicated herself to homemaking. Two loving sisters, Aline and Rosalie, completed the close-knit family circle. Jonathan's roots are traced back to a Russian Jewish immigrant family struggling to make ends meet in their new homeland. Life was far from easy for the Charashuchins, residing in a modest six-story tenement. To supplement their income, Jonathan's resourceful mother often rented out parts of their humble abode. As a result, young Jonathan had to surrender his room and settle for sleeping on the chairs in the dining area. Despite their financial constraints, Jonathan's parents recognized the value of education and strived to provide him with a proper upbringing. They nourished his cultural interest by exposing him to the enchanting world of Yiddish plays and encouraging him to indulge in the melodic tales of operas through the radio's invisible airwaves. Growing up amidst the lively streets of the Bronx, Harris's speech was colored by the distinct accents of his surroundings. However, as time passed, he grew to despise this accent. During his high school years, he took to watching British films, determined to adopt the refined tones of an English accent. High school became a pivotal period for Harris as his interest blossomed and took shape. Here, he discovered a deep fascination for the Latin language, the works of Shakespeare, the allure of romantic poetry, and the mysteries of archaeology. It was during his time at James Monroe High School that his passion for acting took root and flourished. After graduating in 1931, he set out on a path that would eventually lead him to embrace a new surname. Alongside his siblings, he underwent a legal name change, bidding farewell to a family name they deemed unpronounceable and assuming the surname Harris. In 1932, armed with his newfound identity, Jonathan embarked on a journey of higher education, enrolling at Fordham University. Four years later, he proudly graduated with a degree in pharmacology. However, his true calling beckoned him away from the world of pharmaceuticals and into the realm of performing arts. With determination in his heart, Harris entered the professional world, securing his first acting job in 1939 through a fabricated resume. He joined the ranks of a repertory company at the esteemed Mill Pond Playhouse in Long Island, New York. This opportunity opened doors for him, leading to appearances in an impressive tally of 16 plays, each one further cementing his love for the craft of acting. The year 1942 marked a significant milestone in Harris's career as he stepped onto the grand stage of Broadway for the first time. The production was The Heart of a City, and he found himself cast in a prominent role. Portraying a Polish officer, he faced the challenge of mastering a Polish accent. Despite being unfamiliar with this particular inflection, Harris was determined to take on the part. To overcome this hurdle, he conjured up a Polish accent, attributing it to his supposed Polish immigrant parents. During the war years, Harris's talents were devoted to bringing joy and entertainment to American troops stationed in the South Pacific. However, it was his subsequent collaboration with the legendary Marlon Brando in the play A Flag is Born, 1946, that elevated his profile. This success was followed by notable productions such as The Grass Harp, 1952, Hazel Flag, 1953, and The Tea House of the August Moon, 1953 to 1956. In 1948, 
Harris made a pivotal decision to relocate to the bustling city of Los Angeles. This move would prove instrumental in his television debut, which occurred in 1949 with a single episode appearance on the Chevrolet Teletheater. This marked the beginning of his television journey, leading to subsequent appearances on shows like Lights Out, Craft Television Theater, and even Zorro in three episodes in 1959. Venturing into the realm of voice acting, Harris lent his talents to the world of cinema in 1951. His distinctive voice found its way into the Walt Disney production of Alice in Wonderland, where he provided the voice for the character Birds. A year later, he made his first appearance on the silver screen, gracing the 1953 film Botany Bay with his portrayal of Tom Oakley. The turning point in Harris's career arrived in 1959, when he secured a prominent role in the captivating mystery television series called The Third Man. Throughout its run, he graced the screen in a remarkable 72 episodes, portraying the dour and humorless assistant known as Bradford Webster. Simultaneously, he ventured into other television productions, leaving his mark in 40 episodes of The Bill Dana Show from 1963 to 1965. However, it was in 1965 that Harris's acting trajectory took an extraordinary leap. His greatest breakthrough came when he stepped into the shoes of Dr. Zachary Smith in the acclaimed series Lost in Space. Initially cast as a double agent with a limited lifespan, his portrayal resonated deeply with viewers, catapulting him to newfound popularity. Recognizing the magnetic charm and talent he brought to the character, the show's creators decided to keep Harris on as a series regular. He graced the screen in a total of 83 episodes until the show's conclusion in 1968, establishing himself as a beloved villain and a cult icon. Following the conclusion of Lost in Space, the versatile character actor continued to explore the realm of television, leaving his mark in various productions. His credits include appearances in series such as Uncle Croc's Block in 1975 and Space Academy in 1977. However, as time went on, Harris's enjoyment of playing villainous roles began to wane, prompting him to contemplate a change in his career's direction. The year 1978 marked a significant shift in Harris's career as he delved into the realm of voice acting. His talents found a new outlet in the animated series Battlestar Galactica, where he lent his voice to nine episodes. This venture paved the way for a fruitful journey as a voice artist, where he would go on to lend his distinctive voice to a multitude of productions, spanning animated films, television series, and commercials. Among his notable contributions was his work in the series Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, leaving a testament to his versatility and enduring talent. While Harris did reprise his most infamous role as Dr. Smith, in the television special Lost in Space Forever in 1998, he made a significant decision regarding the motion picture adaptation of Lost in Space released that same year. In a departure from his co-stars June Lockhart, Marta Kristen, and Angela Cartwright, who made cameo appearances in the film, Harris chose not to partake. With his characteristic flair and cryptic nature, he declared that if he couldn't portray his iconic role in the movie, he wanted no involvement with it. In the realm of his personal life, Jonathan Harris found love and companionship with his childhood sweetheart and schoolmate, Gertrude Bregman. The couple exchanged vows in 1938 and went on to welcome their only son, Richard Harris, into the world in 1942. In the later years of Harris's life, an exciting opportunity presented itself. In late 2002, he and the surviving cast members of the beloved television series Lost in Space were gearing up to film a movie titled Lost in Space, The Journey Home for NBC. Regrettably, this project could not come to fruition following Harris's untimely passing. Tragically, on November 3, 2002, Harris's life was cut short by a blood clot in his heart. At the time, he was receiving treatment for a chronic back problem at a hospital. 
His death left a void in the entertainment industry and in the hearts of those who cherished his talents and contributions. Harris found his final resting place in Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery, situated in Westwood Village, Los Angeles, where he was interred with reverence and remembrance. Goodbye, and rest in peace, legendary actor Jonathan Harris.